What's up, everybody? Jason here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Another Topps Chrome Hobby two case double header break just sold out. This is time. It's pick your team number three. And again, guys, all cards ship. And let's pull some massive hits. So here we go, guys. This time, um, last spot mojo again was the Dodgers. Braulio got last spot mojo there. Good luck, buddy. And there's everybody else that bought in. So again, another two hobby cases here. Again, we'll do it like we did the first one, guys. We'll do one case at a time. We'll rip the first six boxes, go through the hits, and then go to the next six. Nice. Don't get me wrong, I kind of like Slam Ball, but I kind of want to see something else. Women's FIFA World Cup? Yeah, let's watch some soccer. My finger right here is getting a little sore. A lot of pack ripping from yesterday and today. Gotta go get a hand massage. Gotta put that on the Jaspies bill.
All right, sorry about that, guys. Texting back, Nick. He replied back to me. All right. Gilo, what's going on, man? How are you today, buddy? Yeah, Dodgers don't play today. Football, obviously, I'm missing it. I've been missing it since the Super Bowl, really, honestly. I mean, football. Love that stuff, man. Hockey, obviously, is over for me. Yeah, honestly, this is, like, the worst time of their sports, really. <laughs> Everything, like, everything's kind of done with, minus baseball. And, obviously, if your team's not playing, it's even worse. Yeah, we have Women's World Cup, but I feel like, man, I don't even care for USA anyways, so it's, like... I'm only playing once every like seven days. So, I don't know. This is the time where you'll notice me and Joe really will start playing movies, game shows, just because, you know, there's really nothing on. Good thing though, if obviously football is not too far off now, right? Training camp just started for most people yesterday. But yeah, it's, it's, for me, it's a little bit more rough too, right? I mean, no football, no hockey. Basketball's over with now. Summer really league's over, I should say, at least. Best time, though, will be October, right? You have some October baseball. You'll have basketball starting up. You'll have hockey starting up. you have football a month in. It's going to be glorious. Like mid-October. That is true. I mean, they've made the USA games pretty prime time for us in the States at least, but yeah, I feel you though. Right now I have Argentina and uh, South Africa right now. Plus, it's probably just better to just wait to the knockout stages, really. I mean, unless you're rooting for another country. You know, there's a lot of USA coverage anyways. Oh man, this girl just got hit in the face. 
Yeah, I'll probably end up playing something on on, on movie wise or TV show wise. I mean, obviously Shark Week. I don't know if you like sharks, but we're right in the middle of Shark Week now, getting towards the end actually. But there's been some really cool cool episodes the last couple of nights. Got to catch up and watch some of them tonight. Here's the first six boxes. Really? So maybe as you get older, you just don't like it as much? Damn, I, I, I feel like I'm still gonna like it when I'm older. I've always had a thing for sharks. I've, I've loved sharks since I was a kid. Out of 250, Christian Yelich. And Justin Steele to two fifty for the Cubbies going to Frank. Cade Cavalli for the Washington National negative. JD. Nice. Francisco Alvarez. I believe that is a short print. Ends in 81. Is there three variations? I feel like I pulled a variation yesterday, but it wasn't this one. Unless this is just the base. This might actually just be the base, though. Cause no, the base ends in 21. I hit this one yesterday. But this one definitely looks like a short print, too, though. I don't know. Maybe we'll just top load it just to be safe. Christian Yelich. Oh, so then there is like two different ones, right? There's like Vermish variations and then super short prints. Gotcha. That that makes sense. So that is might be a really really short print right there. Super short print for the Mets. It's going to David. And Brandon Hughes. Thank you, man. <laughs> what, what, what match are we talking about, Julo? The soccer game? Alright, Christopher Morrell, 299. Thank you. Actually, you didn't have a good favorite. Is there any monster boxes back there? If not, can you give me one of those ones right Yeah, yeah, the new ones. Thank you. Okay. 
JD Martinez. Nice. Who are the five super sharp ones if you don't mind sharing that? Thank you, sir. Of course, brother. Have a good one. See ya. See ya. That's right, Serge. Go do yours. Corbin Carroll. Musgrove. And Encarnacion. For the Marlins. Adley Rutschman, Baltimore Orioles. So there's two Orioles there. Corbin Carroll, Riley Green, and then Francisco Alvarez. Nice. Nice. Only five super short prints, guys, and we got one of them. So this was one of them right there. We hit the normal image variation yesterday, but that one was a different one. But more JD Martinez, huh? For those Dodgers. I literally think they're the same colors too. Yeah, <laughs> the same purples. I know, Gila, you see his back was kind of hurting a little bit after that second home run. It's like, bro, he's carrying the angels on his back. Putting too much stress on him. Tatis. And Brad Beatty. That's right, sirs. That's the plan. <laughs> nice break for the Mets so far. Super short print. Now Brad Beatty. Someone's listing out for 2K. It's wild. I mean, depending on the player, obviously some of those super short prints do end up selling for a lot. At least in recent years. Right now, obviously the hype is real with Topps Chrome, so you might have someone that wants to overpay. And look at that, love a little showtime. Remember, guys, hold on to your Shohei Otanis. They do have the MVP buyback coming up, and who knows? Maybe one of these ones might be a pretty good amount at your local car shop. I love how he's card number 17 as well. Strider and Eleni and Sosa gold for the White Sox. Michael, that one.
And how about a little Adley Rutschman? Very nice start to this case. Aaron Billingsley with the Orioles. Very nice. Neil Cruz. It's 125. James Altman. Clean one right there. Refractor. Eight thousand. Damn. Although Julio's prices have dropped a lot though, since May. Nice Garrett Mitchell, negative. Brewers, Brian K. Corbin Carroll, Refractor. And Drew Waters. Volpe. Okie dokie. Next box Ola. Yeah, that and, you know, Mariners are, you know, not really much better than they were last year, right? I mean, there's still time to, you know, fight for a wild card playoff spot potentially, but, yeah, not as probably good of a year. And that's the one thing, guys. I mean, it doesn't mean Julio's going to not be a great player in this league. It's just that... The hype was real on him last year, and if you had him last year and you sold him, you probably got really, really good value. And same thing for Ellie. I, I think the same thing's gonna happen to Ellie Delac Cruz. Like, you know, may, maybe he has a much better second year. I don't know, but I just feel like his his market right now is just so big and exploding that right now is a good time to cash in on him. You know, don't stress about it. Just get good money for it, and then maybe turn it into something else, and maybe you can buy it that specific card back later for a lot cheaper, you know? You never know. Especially if you believe in them. There's always opportunity to really buy back something eventually. See, like, it's a good thing that they're probably going to hold out LA till next year's stuff, but it's also a bad thing because, again, it might be like Wander Franco where, like, they hold him out to the next year and then all of a sudden, you know, his market just went a lot down. So, I'm happy that they might hold him back, but I'm kind of also kind of a little sad that they're holding him back, probably, because it's just hard to time when someone's going to get called up, you know? I know, I think like Bobby Witt stuff has kind of dropped a little bit too, right? I mean, it happens though. But I mean, like, the great ones obviously just stay consistent year in and year out, right? I mean, that's the crazy part about being an actual superstar. Now that Otani's been healthy, right? I mean, look at how consistently dominant he's been since, you know, his, his injury.
I had this one debate with one of our customers on Instagram about Otani because, like, the way he's playing, the way he has played for the last two, three years, he's a Hall of Famer, right? I mean, at least Hall of Fame caliber. But because he's doing the pitching and the batting at the same time, obviously, how many years of him doing what he's doing these last few years will it take for him to just already be a Hall of Famer? You know, because we hardly ever see this, right? Minus maybe Babe Ruth or something like that. So it's like, let's just say Otani does this for another two, three years and then just kind of falls off or has like a crazy injury. But only ended up playing, you know, let's say eight years or so. Maybe maybe a little bit more, you know. Is he, is he like a Hall of Famer already? customer of mine over on Instagram was like, he needs to do it for a lot more than that, you know? But I'm like, bro, but he's like the only one doing this. Like, I mean, him playing this well, pitching and batting, at the same time, it's like, what the hell, dude? Like, how many years is it actually going to take for him to be a Hall of Famer? Transport me back in time, g -Lo. Please. Please. Let's transport me back in time. My God. My dumb ass was all buying freaking Miles Sanders because I loved him on the Eagles when I should have been buying Otani. My God. I still remember, man, when I went to the Dallas Card Show with Nick back in, like, 2021. His like Topps Chrome base PSA tens were like twenty five bucks. Twenty five dollars a piece. I remember Nick bought like a hundred. <laughs> then later that year, he went off and they ended up going for like a couple hundred dollars each. I mean, this is, we're just talking base cards. And then we ended up getting a. Uh, a trout short print I remember there at the show. Short print autograph from Topps Chrome, graded 9510 orange to 25. It was like pretty it was pricey, don't get me wrong. But man, that shit acts like 15 times. <laughs> Jesus. But again, I'm more of a collector, but I just think of all the opportunities that I had to actually buy stuff that I could have, but I just never did. You know? So it's like crazy. Oh yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. Like if I had the mentality of buying and flipping, then obviously I could have bought a lot of that stuff back in the day, but I was just investing more into my own personal collection. Which maybe I feel a little regretful now, but it is what it is, right? That's a, it's a steal. I want to say his base PSA 10 now, like top from are what, like $250, $300 probably? I mean, at least a couple hundred dollars, I bet. Well, I mean, he had a pretty serious injury, but I mean, it's just like, again, he had a really rough start to his career in the MLB. Where people were really starting to doubt, like, is, is this guy even for real, you know? But, 
man, once he turned it on, that's what I'm saying. Like, ever since then, you know, 2021, he's just been con consistently doing what he was supposed to do, you know? Yeah, his first couple seasons obviously didn't start off so good. I mean, imagine the guy at the time, right? Otani was super hot in 2018, and I, I thought I'd remember the guy that pulled the Otani super fracture from Tops, Chrome, or Bowman. I think it was Bowman. Just ended up selling it for like, I don't wanna say like 60,000 or if not more than that. Which don't get me wrong, it was a lot of money back then. But imagine now what something like that goes for. If somebody really put that out there. Crazy. And obviously 2018 in the hobby was still going up until obviously 2020 when it exploded, but it's like man, it's crazy. Crazy. I, I think he should have been MVP last year. I know Judge did what he did, but Otani should have been MVP last year, really. Now, it's going to be hilarious if somehow he, like, even gets close to the home run record in the AL or even ties it. It'd be amazing. Like, imagine he does that. And then everybody was talking about Aaron Judge is the go and, you know, the legend. But this... This kid Otani over here just pretty much tied it or, you know, got close enough. And he also was pitching at the same time, you know? Wow. I mean, if he, what, what is he at now? Does anybody know how many homers he has now? I mean, he knocked in two more today, right? There's still a chance, but just the fact that he's even going to get close enough. Thirty-eight or thirty-nine now. That's pretty good. I mean, damn. Let's see. Yeah. So if he had thirty-six, he has thirty-eight now. Next closest is Matt Olson at thirty-two. Then Lou Bob at twenty-eight. Pete Alonso, Mookie Betts, J.D. Martinez. And he's basically batting 300 right now. of South Africa now up only 2-1 they were up 2-0 but Argentina just scored beautiful goal too
Right? That's what I'm saying, dude. And actually, speaking about that... Yeah, Lou Bob is... Lou Bob is, uh... Yeah, he's like six away in that, in that uh... Yeah, he's the only one that's six away in the AL. So basically, it's just Shohei, Luis, Robert, and then... Then Devers at 25. Then everybody else is all NL, right? Matt Olson, Pete Alonzo, Mookie Betts, Schwarber, J.D. Martinez, Muncy. Dodgers actually have a lot of home runs. Dodgers have Muncy at 25 in the top 10. They have J.D. Martinez at 25 and Mookie Betts at 27. And then right now, Freddie Freeman, I think, is still second in batting average. Behind the dude for the Marlins. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's more to obviously just like stats, batting average, and stuff like that, home runs, the war, the on base percentage. All right, here we go, guys. Let's continue on. Yachty. Jake McCarthy to 75. To get into the Hall of Fame, you're saying? So, what, I mean, what if someone hits, like, 500 home runs? You know, or something like that. I mean, obviously, I'm assuming that there's still other ways to get in minus just using, like, war. Somebody's just hitting bombs all the time. David Hensley. I mean, not that I know anybody's going to get in anymore. David Hensley, that's Astros. Freddie Freeman to two ninety nine. Wow, Argentina just tied it. I know, I feel like you've been counting a lot of purple. That one was a purple speckle a little bit. Don't worry, man. This is just case one, so. Stuff half of this case and then a whole other case. I still feel like we're still due for some big stuff here, though. We got Devers there to 199. Carnacion to 150. The camera's bugging again. I think every once in a while I kind of tries to focus too much. Alright, next box. John Gray, negative for the Texas Rangers. And look at that, nice Kyle Tucker. 
But a patch autograph for Houston. That to the top scrum authentics. Uh, 37 out of 99. Damn. That's crazy. That's like double Pujols' war. But I mean, that's not his lifetime war though, right? For Pujols. Uh, Kyle Tucker though. Houston Astros, Matthew McNeil. There you go, man. Adley. Outman. There you go. A little green. A little green. 29 out of 99. This case was like fine, sir. I'll get you some other colors. Michael Massey. Autograph there for Kansas City. And how about a little Adley Rutschman? Very nice. Ultraviolet All Stars. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Ended up winning that uh, triple, right? With uh, Alomar. Congrats, buddy. Yes, ultraviolets are considered case hits for sure, yep. I think so are the MLB Authentics too, so. Autographs, I should say, at least, probably. All right, here we go, next box. We got three more in this case. Taylor Ward, blue. I will say this blue, solid pops. Get like a James Altman like this. Sick. Yoshida. And nice Garrett Mitchell. 96 out of 99. What a green pulsar. And another Brett Beatty. That's our second one. I feel like we got a numbered one and now our little base. Matt's good case, first case I should say. And Brandon Hughes for the Cubbies to Frank. Let's get another short print. Mark Vientos. Stephen Kwan.
Yeah, well, just the Mets in general, g -Lo. They're kind of not doing as what they thought they would be right now. How many times you change your underwear already, Rex? Seeing that 9-1 to score. All right, last box of the first case. Cedric Mullins to 99. Played by by this red right here. I feel like since I feel like it's gonna be a red. Austin Hayes to three ninety nine. And Shay Langliers for the Oakland A's going to Stephen Carney. Sheeta refractor, and there we go. That's right, Axel, you tell him. Okay, guys, so again, that was the uh, first case. So there you go. And we got a super short print. Brett Beatty, Otani, Rutschman, Altman, Oddly again, Brett Beatty. So what's happened though, x -Line? I mean, I feel like obviously, you know, I don't think this is what anybody really expected, right? And now to the point where you guys are probably gonna end up being some sellers. throw a little jab there at G-Lo's team too. <laughs> Casey can't be as bad as Oakland, can they? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I'm just, I'm just made for G-Lo. <laughs> KC right there. But yeah, Pigeon was miserable for most of the season and needed a swing and miss. Uh, I mean, it happens though, right? I mean, it's not the end of the world. I mean, yeah, obviously, obviously for both of you guys, yeah, there's still a lot of baseball to be played in the sense, obviously, and probably still not going to be what you guys want, potentially, but yeah, I mean, could get closer at the end of the season. feel a little bet coming along. Come on, you got like a five game lead.
So for baseball MLB draft, correct me if I'm wrong, does it still like get awarded to like the worst team in the sport, like the way usually like football is in other sports? Or is it a lottery too? I don't think it's a lottery, right? I know baseball has like kind of multiple drafts, don't they? It is lottery, okay. I gotta see this play you guys are talking about. I know you guys are talking about like the guy getting thrown out. I'll look it up after this break. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Thanks, Grizzlebees. Yeah, no, I'm not saying people tank. Plus, honestly, baseball's a lot different, obviously. There's no even guarantee that the number one overall pick's going to make it. So, I mean, I don't think teams tank anyways, but... Especially if it's a lottery. It's not like... I'm not like it makes a huge difference. Like... like Grizzly set, right? I mean, Pirates didn't have the worst record last year and they got number one. All right, Rex, come on. Rex is avoiding the bet question. <laughs> I want to see a bet. Let's go. True, that, that could affect the second half. You guys should bet like something where like, you know, the loser has to buy the winner a pick your team spot in like, you know, a future group break or something like. Like if we had diamond icons yet or something, you know, something like that, that'd be fun. <laughs> Rex is like, I ain't scared of nothing this year. I don't know which future products are still coming out, but something like that would be fun. Just the loser has to buy the winner's pick your team spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah of course. We're gonna officiate it, make sure it goes through, so. Gotta definitely buy it with us. <laughs> And honestly, probably, I mean, I mean, I would assume that the Cardinals would be a little bit more pricier than the, the Cubs, but it's not like the Cubs are the worst team to get in the product this year. Yeah, I was hearing the Dodgers obviously trying to, trying to land a Cardinal, and I think it might include, like, Bobby Miller, potentially. I don't know, man. I like Bobby Miller. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I think that's probably why they're going to want, like, some good prospects or good pitching prospects slash maybe starting pitchers. I like Bobby Miller a lot, actually.
Yeah, I heard about that too. Like, he has a no trade clause, right? But he's willing to, to waive it. I mean, if the Dodgers obviously offer the best for him, I'd assume the Cardinals would take it, right? So I think trade deadline's, what, next Tuesday or so? I think Tuesday or Monday? <laughs> Come on, Rex. Put your money where your mouth is. I'm not sure, actually, what the... I mean, I guess we can predict it. Let's see. After the regular season or after, like, the postseason? Because if it's, like, regular season, you guys have, like... <laughs> Let's see. Where's baseball at? Baseball, technically, after... I mean, right now, it just seems like nothing's really releasing. Actually, Top Scrum Platinum Anniversary is releasing, but that's in August. The 9th, it looks like. Immaculate Baseball will be the 23rd of August. And then Allen and Ginter, the 30th. Uh, select Baseball on, on uh, September 6th. Right? Oh, is, is, is that right? I don't see it on Blowout's calendar, but okay. Yeah, something in October or something. That's what I'm saying. Regular season doesn't end until the end of September, right? Yeah, it's actually true. So, yeah. I don't see it on Blowout's calendar at least yet, but the only thing they have up until is, like, select baseball on the 6th of off September. But, yeah. I mean, obviously, you guys have time to figure out which product. Potentially depends. I mean, our 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 uh, vision for Fanatics will be kind of more like Fanatics Live will be kind of taking over the IG personal side a little bit and mixing in some group breaks at the same time. So obviously, while we're trying to sell group breaks, we'll be doing personals there, vice versa, you know. And then obviously, our our plan is to still have YouTube here, like normal. But obviously, I mean, if Fanatics does explode or does well and people kind of are shifting towards them then I mean obviously there's capability of having multiple channels on our fanatics live so you can always do that too but I think the plan for now is just still have YouTube running like normal in the meantime and then obviously potentially kind of shutting down IG for a little bit and focusing a little bit more on fanatics live with personals and group breaks Obviously, this last week or so, with the national coming around, you know, we, we did some test breaks. So the days that we did Fanatics Live, we shut down YouTube. But that won't be happening, I think, regularly in August. Because what we're basically doing is we're gonna move the IG studio to the next studio that's behind this wall, this next room, then create a whole new studio like we were originally planned. Originally, we were supposed to have Instagram in that room behind this room, but um, we ended up making a little space right there where we're at in the show floor area, so that's where we had IG. But if we're gonna have like two people breaking and you know, kind of make it look like a nice little studio, then we're gonna move that over there. So. But yeah, you'll be able to potentially get into group breaks here and there. And then also obviously, have personals too, as well. Tuesday we did a football mixer that was all panini basically. Yeah, yeah, no, I 
I think Fnatic's live, even though obviously Fnatic's owns Tops or, you know, it's a partnership with Tops. I mean, they're not specifically allowing, they're not specifically saying you can't break anything there. I mean, they're, they're just another platform, really. So it, it, they're not restricting anybody from selling anything there, really, to my knowledge. You know. So, so yeah, we'll be able to break anything over there, basically. It could be anything from tops to upper deck to, to leaf, probably. Uh, whatever we break, really. Of course, man. But, I mean, obviously, Fnatic's Live is not, like, competing with, like, Panini Live. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's more like that's just another platform and a side business to Fnatic. So, again, uh, they're... They're not trying to restrict it, saying you can't break Panini on here, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like Panini has their own streaming website or, you know, software to kind of deal with. So, again, just think of Fanatics Live as just like another platform, really. That's all it is. It's just owned by Fanatics, really. Yeah, I think that was kind of funny, though, right, Gila? <laughs> I mean, they're the ones that have promotional packs that we have. I mean, if we would have had, like, tops packs, I guess we would have given those out. But, but anyway, um, so, yeah, Rex, I don't know if you're watching, but Xline's saying, okay, Triple Threats, first break, loser buys the other team. He goes, I'll even buy more than one Cubs for you if they're half the price of the Cardinals. Ooh. 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 So, I don't know. Xline's already throwing it down right there. The ball's in your court. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty crazy change in two years when uh, uh, Fanatics and Tops have all the main licensing, really. I'm actually kind of excited, though. I know, obviously, it really seems like Fanatics is taking over fully, but I'm pretty excited for them to like have like Dynasty football. You know, definitive basketball and like all these other products that we see for baseball. Back for other sports, really. And then, obviously, we can have Tops football back. Tops from basketball. Maybe they'll even bring back Supreme football. Top Supreme football. She was loaded in 2015. No, Richard. I think we were told that they are working on Android as we speak, and I think it should be ready within the next month. So, I think for now they, they got through the hurdle of Apple, and I, I think I think Joe was telling me that the reason why they do that is like if you can get it on Apple, then it's easier to get on all the other ones. But um, but yes, it'll be on Android soon. I think within the next month. I think again they're also updating the app like daily. There'll be more checkout options as well too, like PayPal and and all this other stuff, you know, so. <clears throat> There'll be more payment methods, options, and and all that good stuff, so. Again, it's still really early in the stages of the app. So, it's definitely not the final product out there. <laughs> I know, it just feels like the Android people are left out. See, like, Joe, you know what's funny about Joe, though, is that Joe's an Android phone guy, but over the years, Joe has basically has switched over to Apple. Like he has an iPad, he has, you know, he has a little like a like a Mac laptop now. You know, like he has everything Apple minus his phone. So, so Joe's obviously one of those guys where it's like, well, okay, I don't have it on my Android, but I can also still have it, still have it on my iPad. You know, so he's able to download it on his iPad, which is kind of funny. But for the people that are just strictly Android, yeah, they're kind of kind of for now. Yes, they're also going to have a desktop version, too, within the next month. So, obviously, you know, you won't have to worry about having Android or not. You can eventually log on to the computer just like YouTube or any other 
platform that is compatible with desktop and then have it that way too. So we got a lot of big changes, a lot of big upgrades happening soon. It's just, just gonna take some time. I didn't, I didn't think they would have this app ready, to be honest, around this time. I, I was told that it was going to happen later this year, maybe beginning of next year, but I think uh, they wanted to rush to try to get this done as quickly as possible at the National. And again, so far, it's, it's still solid, but obviously always improving. So, like I said, it's not the finished product yet. All right, nice Julio right there. Sweet. Out of 125. Yeah, I still see the other platforms still being around too. I mean, it's, it's just however people want to decide. I mean, it's just another way to, to purchase. Another platform to purchase, honestly. 57 out of 299. Senga, that's a nice one. But obviously, if Fanatics does blow up the way that you know I think it could blow up, it could definitely... Uh, obviously poach customers to want to shop there exclusively now over other ones but we'll see who knows yes I hit that hula yesterday actually it was really nice it was just the base though no color and there we go nice Riley Green for the Detroit Tigers EA there you go Ultraviolet All Stars. Mookie, nice little negative right there for the Dodgers. Gunnar Henderson hyper. You don't know how bad I want to pull you like a nice album, man. I'm, I'm really pushing for you. But so far, yeah, still getting some nice, really nice colors though. And you did get a nice Altman, Altman color, but one little ink on there for you, you know? Matthew for the Cardinals. Laboratory, Senga. America is playing against St. Louis right now. Nice. Ooh, is that gold? Is that gold I see? Outfielder, gold. Bryce Johnson. Signed it a little high. It's supposed to be signing down here, buddy. Come on. Come on, Giants. Although, nice hit there, though. Monty with the Giants. Nice Jordan Walker. Excellent. There you go. That is 68 out of 150. Tristan Casas to 399 for the Red Sox. Kenny with that one.
vientos seccionar nada and Bo Naylor so 299 that one's for the Guardians Stephen Carney Gone. Vladdy Junior to three ninety nine. Lou Bob. And Jonathan Aranda. Out of 2.99, nice. America just scored. I think it was Martin for Team Mexico. Nice goal. Riley Green. Purple. I know, I feel like there is going to be a nice monster in this case. So far, it hasn't been the craziest. And obviously, we still have two boxes here and then another six there, so... Definitely do for something. I feel like... Ryan Reynolds. James Altman. Nick Brato. Josh Smith for Texas. Rangers, Richard Miller. That would be nice. I do like these in early tournaments and I think the MLS just had to do this, man. Or uh, Mexico and them had to collab because I mean, MLS is starting to be a little bit better than than uh, the Mexican league, so it's kind of fun they're doing it. But I just kind of hate. I don't know if you. I don't know if you haven't been reading about it though. But this leaks cup is kind of interesting and kind of really unfair to the Mexican league. Like they're all been playing away. First of all, it's not like any MLS team is traveling right now to Mexico. And then on top of that, like Leon, I think they ended up beating the Galaxy today. And, uh, but Leon, I think, was stuck in Vancouver because I guess, like, their flight or passport or visa things. And they basically had, like, no sleep for this game because they were stuck at an airport for, like, the whole night. And still managed to win. <laughs> but it's kind of, kind of funny. It's like an advantage to the United States, I guess. Logan Webb. Yeah, Almond's been getting a lot hotter as of late. Definitely been batting much better, too. But, yeah. 
But yeah, I haven't. I don't think I've hit a vet one yet, have I, guys? I feel like I haven't. I'd love to get a vet on though. Yoshida. Josh Bell with 350. Come on, baby, give me something nice. Give me something nice. Oh, we got an orange. Spencer Steer. I feel like I've hit two of these already. Very nice one there for the Cincinnati Reds. Going to Jonathan. 11 out of 25. What do you mean, Julo? You're trying to say like Mexican leagues don't have good stadiums? A lot of big soccer clubs in Mexico, man. I mean, for one, America plays Estadio Azteca. <laughs> I mean, I guess Inter Miami's is also nothing fancy. It only holds like 20,000 people or something. I want to hit a super, man. I mean, I guess I'll take a red now. I know, Richard. I could have been, could have been a guy jung. I remember Spencer Steer started off the season pretty hot, but I don't know how he's doing now. He was a name that people were kind of excited for as well. I, I doubt they're going to put Ellie in this product, Tristan, or any product this year. They're going to milk him next year. They should, though, because his market is <laughs> going to be hot. Hot as it's ever now, but... They probably want him to be the main chase in next year's product. He'll be the face of everything. Yeah, I've only hit one taco refractor and also one negative. My taco refractor was in the first case last night, yesterday, and that was it. No more again. What's going on with that, right? But I only have like two orders, guys. Two orders. Are people are people tops chromed out? I, I really want to do a Breakers Delight tonight, guys. Please. <laughs> We're only at 15. I've been wanting to do that since yesterday. Teddy did a lot of that stuff yesterday. Um, but we were holding out to have it debut on the YouTube side of the National, but that Breakers Delight is really, really loaded, guys. It's a pricier box price, especially when you're only getting like two autos and all that stuff, but it's pretty loaded, guys. And then it looks like we're down to two left and Topps Chrome Jumbo, so obviously Topps Chrome Jumbo I know should happen tonight, but let's get that Breakers Delight going. Halfway there. Uh, looks like last two teams are the Braves and the Dodgers. Cardinals just got scooped up.
Whoa! Look at that, right on the top. Oswaldo Peraza. Short print, the image variation. Green speckle. Nice. Ending in 73. Nice one there for the Yanks, Tristan. There you go, buddy. I know. They're like, all right, all right, Tristan, calm, calm down, calm down. We're gonna get you something. Yeah, so who are your Yankees probably willing to trade for Bellinger? I mean, my thing is he's having a really good, obviously, bounce back year. So good for him and obviously good for the Cubs if they decide to trade him. They will get a better haul back now. But what are they, what are they, what are they willing to give up? I love Kika. I love that Kika's back search. I miss that guy, man. Yeah, man, Rogers giving up 35 million. I mean, I thought. I mean, is he really giving up 35 million? I didn't see the specifics, but isn't he just getting it next year? 
but he basically created cap space. It's just so funny because I think in Green Bay, they wanted him to take a pay cut, but he said no. <laughs> but it's just so funny that in New York, obviously, he is. I mean, Reese Hall was balling, dude. He was balling. Just sucks that he tore his ACL. But yeah, you're right, Exxon. It's not that easy, right? It's not like, you know, we're going to bring in Dalvin Cook and that's it. We're winning the Super Bowl or, you know, we're, I'm giving up all this money, right? I mean, obviously, the man Patty Mahomes is still out there. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, good for the Jets, man. Obviously, I'm sure their fans have endured a lot of bad years lately. Um, so, good for them landing Rodgers and trying to go all in. I mean, I think the, I think the Jets have a legit good defense. I mean, they, they did pretty well last year. Obviously, just the quarterback play really messed them up. And obviously, with Rodgers there, if that's the case, that should change, you know? But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to me because in that division there, the fourth place team might miss the playoffs but might win 10 games. Just, just really thinking about that, you know, in that division there where you have, like, the Patriots, you have the, the Bills, the Jets, the Dolphins. Like, talk about a stacked division, you know. But yeah, no, yeah, we were talking about that earlier, you know, that burrow injury. Thankfully, right? It's just, it's just a just a calf strain, but again, at the same time, you know, calf strains if rushed back, you know, can lead to an Achilles tear, and that's kind of the problem is that a lot of people were speculating it could have been Achilles, but thankfully they're saying it's a calf strain, so you know, it's gonna be uh, one that I don't think Burrow should rush too much, and the Bengals shouldn't rush him back. He obviously was practicing today with a leg, a calf sleeve, so I think they were saying he already had a little soreness. But obviously, you know, ended up pulling it. How about, uh, how about your Jaguars, Tristan, huh? I've seen some uh, videos of uh, Calvin Ridley. That dude look ready. That dude look ready. Talk about Calvin Ridley, Josh. Wait, can you say something about Desmond Ritter? Oh, that's right. I forgot D Hop's joined the Titans, huh? <laughs> I don't know, man. Tennessee's. They're a little in limbo. Although I did hear some reports saying that Malik Willis has looked much better this offseason. More sharp, quicker, a little bit stronger. I don't know. I think last year Malik showed a little bit of promise, but I just feel like he was thrown to the wolves and then they basically didn't trust him down the stretch and kind of lost confidence, really. But uh, like I said, I don't I, I, I don't even know what's going to happen in Tennessee with their quarterback situation because 
you know. I think Vrabel said 10 at the time ahead of our starter, but Malik is going to be the backup, and the new quarterback is going to be a third stringer, and however it lands in the preseason, we'll figure it out. So I don't know. But I think D-Hop went to the Titans and took some money, right? Yeah, if you're a Raiders guy, I still don't think it's going to be a good season for you guys, but I think it'll still be fun and exciting because you guys do have some fun players, fun weapons on both the defensive side and the offensive side. Max Crosby, I mean, that's the one thing, man. Max Crosby's a beast, and I think he's trying to, he's kind of hitting the prime of his career, right? I think he's like, what, 26 now, 27? And obviously you got some Josh Jacobs on the offensive side. Although I don't think he's, he hasn't signed up. Actually, still got Devontae Adams. Either way, though, anybody in the AFC East is kind of screwed with, with uh, the Chiefs in there, anyways. Or AFC West, I should say, not East. Um, but yeah, that's right. Yeah, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Malik Will Levis, maybe. So, your Jaguars should be able to win the division, right? I mean, barring any injuries, I would say. All right, here we go, guys. I think you will, Tristan. The best thing you guys did was get rid of, uh, get rid of the other coach that was a joke, and then hire a real coach like Doug Peterson, who's a good quarterbacks coach, good players coach. You know, he he turned it around for T Law, honestly. Drew Hicklin. Oscar Gonzalez. guys five more to go bone actually I haven't pulled any redemptions at all so I mean is there even redemptions in this Bo Naylor. I mean, I guess I haven't hit every single rookie rookie auto yet, probably. Garrett Cole. Or maybe not, actually. I hit Corbin Carroll today. I think the Broncos will definitely be much better this year. I, I believe that. Oh really? Who was the uh, who was the redemption today? Was it like a vet or a rookie? Wander Franco there. Oh okay, so that makes sense. So like a veteran, something like that, Piazza. Gunnar Henderson. And Will Brennan. 
for the Guardians purple. Stephen Carney to 250. A couple of Guardians hits back to back. Bryce Terrain to 99. From Milwaukee. And Francisco Alvarez, nice gold wave, 24 out of 50. Nice one there for the Mets. All right, three more to go, guys. Stowers. Willie Adams. Adams. Trevor Story for the Red Sox to 199. Pitcher Hunter Brown to 150. Smaller Cabrera. Two boxes, guys. It's more like HTA GLO and it's more catered to breakers, really. There's only 12 cards in the whole box, and you get two autos, like six refractors, a couple colors, potentially inserts, case hits, and that's pretty much it. And it's 12 boxes a case. It's basically like HTA, it's getting rid of all the heavy base stuff. Mark Vientos to two ninety nine. Yeah, I trapped I seen that earlier, took a glimpse of it when I was here live. I just didn't reply back though. But that's a very nice one, man. Where'd you get that at? Did that in a breaker somewhere? Shaylen Lears. Is that a short print? No, just a base. And Paul Goldschmidt and I am. But yeah, Breakers Delight seems to be pretty loaded, though. It's pretty much just as much as a jumbo box with one less auto. But like I said, I think you do get a lot more chances at, like, the case hits and stuff. Masataki Yoshida to 199. Nice. Awesome, man. Going. Oh, 
purple. Outfielder. It is Marcus Wilson for Seattle. Purple. Mariners, Derwin. Alrighty, guys. One more chance as an auto, guys. I will post up another double header after this, guys. So obviously you guys can start buying into that one for potentially tomorrow. Marcus Stroman for the Cubbies for Frank. Catcher to 50, Shea Langliers, gold for the Oakland A's. Had a lot of nice color ending off the case though, but not one of the bigger rookies. Corbin Carroll though, it's a nice one there for Diamondbacks, Brad. 25 out of 150. And there we go, folks. That was the dual caser. Still had a lot of colors going out to a lot of teams, but I know there might have been some teams that didn't get any autos. Thanks for giving it a shot, though. There was a lot of nice color, though, for a lot of teams. Obviously, everything does ship, guys. And again, obviously, for some of the bigger teams, you know, there's potential for an MVP on your team. Definitely hold on to those base cards, any colors, any numbered cards, whatever. Because again, the tops is doing the MVP buyback, so. You know, if you have like the Braves, potentially Dodgers, Angels, some of those teams that have players uh, with potential for MVPs, definitely hold on to those because you can turn those base cards into some cash back. I think last year, I think every base was like, what, 20 bucks or something like that? So, but I'll do a quick recap though. We still did get some nice stuff, but I feel like our last dual case was a little bit better, but we still got some stuff here though. Shailen Lears, of course, Wilson, you guys just seen these, Brown, Brennan, Naylor. Hicklin, Smith, Aranda, Naylor again, Langliers. A couple of uh, repeat names, too. Got that Kyle Tucker there for Houston patch autograph. Encarnacion Blue, Waters, Encarnacion again, Hughes, and Steele. And then we did get a Brett Beatty to 299, that little Tawny color. We got a Rutschman. I guess we still got some good names. Altman color, Adley, Ultraviolet, Brett Beatty again. Francisco Alvarez, super short print. Sanga to 299. We got a Riley Green, Ultraviolet. Got a gold there, Jordan Walker color, Spencer Steer to 25, uh, short print Oswaldo Barraza, Alvarez to 50, Yoshida, and Corbin Carroll. There's eh, still a nice couple of cases here. But obviously shooting for always better, guys. So appreciate it, guys. I will post up a fourth dual caser if you guys want to run it back for maybe tomorrow. Uh, but tonight we can still do the Topps Chrome Breakers Delight and looks like one left in the jumbo. So appreciate it, guys. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com.